I'm Ron Peterson and I'm the director of the Mayo Clinic Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. The study that is being published in neurology in the first week in September is a population-based study of the prevalence or the frequency of the condition called mild cognitive impairment in the general population. We at the Mayo Clinic did a study which was a random sample of 2,000 individuals over the age of 70 years in Olmsted County, Minnesota, and we assessed these individuals for their degree of cognitive impairment or normal cognitive functioning. And what we found was that about 16% of the population, in fact, had mild cognitive impairment, which is defined as a memory impairment beyond what we would expect for normal aging, yet the people do not meet criteria for dementia or Alzheimer's disease. It's thought to be a precursor of Alzheimer's disease itself. An unexpected finding in this study was that the frequency of mild cognitive impairment in men was actually greater than that in women. And that was unexpected because the frequency of women who have Alzheimer's disease is greater than that of men. So in this early stage, it was odd that the men actually outnumbered the women, yet when the disease progresses to the fully developed dementia stage of Alzheimer's disease, the women outnumber the men. So this was one of the first actual population-based studies of the frequency of mild cognitive impairment. So if we take the figure of 16% of the general population is likely to have mild cognitive impairment, we also estimate that perhaps another 10 or 11% of that same population already has fully developed dementia or Alzheimer's disease. And combining the two, we're now getting figures of 25 or more percent of the population age 70 and older either has dementia or is at risk for developing dementia in the near future. If you put those figures on top of the aging of America figures or in particular the baby boomers who are now reaching the age of risk for Alzheimer's disease, the numbers are quite staggering and the impact on the healthcare economy and on individuals and families is quite impressive. So now that we have established this population of individuals with mild cognitive impairment, we are following them over time to see at what rate they will be developing Alzheimer's disease. The idea being that if we in fact are able to predict which individuals are going to progress more rapidly, we might be able to intervene sooner in the disease process as therapies are developed. Ultimately, of course, we want to follow this entire population, including the 75% of the population that's really still cognitively normal, to see if the same prediction factors that predict who with mild cognitive impairment is going to progress to Alzheimer's disease will be uh, applicable to the general population, individuals who are normal but might progress on to mild cognitive impairment. The big picture for this research, of course, is that we feel that to make a real headway into the treatment of Alzheimer's disease, we need to identify it as early as possible and actually prevent the disease itself. In order to do that kind of work, we need to identify people in the population with various characteristics of their memory function, perhaps biomarkers, imaging features of their brains, and out of that host of variables try to select those that are most useful at predicting who will develop Alzheimer's disease in the future. Again, the purpose of this research is to try to intervene as early as possible in the Alzheimer's disease process. And if we're able to develop imaging markers or biomarkers that tell us which normal people are at risk for developing Alzheimer's disease, when the disease-modifying therapies become available, we'll want to intervene as soon as possible.